Wetlands provide critical ecological services upon which human welfare depends. They provide the much-needed supply, storage and purification of water. Large expanses of wetland not only regulate climate, they also control flooding. When used sustainably, wetlands are a source of resources that generate employment and contribute to human welfare through fishing, supply of grass, papyrus stalks, and reeds used to weave mats and baskets, as well as sand for housing construction. Uganda is, however, losing critical sections of its wetland systems through encroachment. If you look at the coverage of wetland, it has reduced um, from 14% to as low as now to about 8.4%. Uh, uh, and primarily, wetlands has been a soft target. Uh, we have uh, people who are involved in subsistence agriculture because they are not resilient. They go to wetlands, especially during the spell or the dry spell, to try to access water uh, from the wetlands. Also the animals, the same. Uh, and we have also seen quite a lot of industries also trying to set up in the wetlands because the land is generally cheaper than in most of these other areas. The mandate of protection of wetland is vested in the Ministry of Water and Environment, Districts and the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, according to the local government management structure. In order to reverse the trend of wetland laws in the country, the Ministry of Environment and Wetlands set out to implement a series of actions, including demarcation of wetlands, eviction of encroachers, and restoration. In 2018, the Auditor General's Office carried out a value for money audit on the management of wetlands in Uganda by the Wetland Management Department to establish the extent of a reduction in wetland coverage countrywide and evaluate the adequacy of measures put in place to ensure protection and restoration of wetlands. The audit assessed protection and restoration of wetlands for the period between 2014 and 2018. This is Utabika, a major wetland system on the shores of Lake Victoria, stretching for 800 hectares between Butabika, Luzira and Bugolobi suburbs. This major water storm control and filtration system for pollutants from the urban settlements and industrial complexes has suffered due to re-encroachment by human settlements following previous restoration efforts. In 2014 there, there were no settlements. 2015-16, people started uh, entering, and then 17, people had, you know, it had the settlements had increased in the wetland. That is why we, we prioritized the restoration of that wetland by that time. But now they have again gone back. Heavy investment in this fragile ecological system, which is a lifeline for a clean water supply to Kampala City, goes on unabated. Intriguingly, there is no ownership of responsibility to the continued land acquisition. Key players shift blame between NEMA and the Kampala City authorities. It's not that we, 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 we slept on the job. It is because of... The, 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 the way the, the environment is managed is really very decentralized. There are managers at local government who should do that work fast. But you find that the local councillors and whatever are actually the front lines of trading on this product. The National Environment Agency, NEMA, states that the political implications, especially during the electoral period, often override the decisions of those seeking to conserve wetlands, especially those around Kampala City. We have had uh, several times attempts to guide people to get out. The, 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 politi the political climate doesn't work out very well and so forth. So it complicates the, the, the issue. And also really comes in where, where do the people go. 
According to the 1995 constitution, government holds in trust all wetlands for the people of the Republic of Uganda. Therefore, no activity is permitted in a wetland without a wetland user permit from NEMA. The authority has issued 239 wetland user permits, which in its report to the Value for Money audit were complying to the set conditions. Luero Wetland System, located in Kalungu District, stretches about 20 kilometers along the Kampala Masaka Highway. It is a major water catchment area that connects several rivers and wetlands in Gomba, Mpiji, and Kalungu District and drains directly into Lake Victoria. Luera is one among the wetland systems in the country where NEMA has issued a permit. Zong Industries Limited acquired a permit to establish a paddy rice growing and processing project in Lukaya, stretching up to approximately three square miles. Currently under expansion, the rice project is seemingly taking up more wetland space. According to the law, all wetlands uh, belong to government. Okay, central government or local governments. So to use them, that means access, you are supposed to ask for permission. The agriculture investment in the wetland is vibrant, with a beehive of activities ranging from early stages of rice growing in the paddies, including transplanting and weeding. The processing takes center place in the project. Inside the plant are several rice processing activities that yield tons of rice and employ hundreds of people. The District Environment Monitoring Department welcomed the project, which according to them meets the requirements of undertaking agriculture within a wetland system. At the same time, they believe it contributes to the economic development of the district. By far, it has its benefits, the project. And uh, we based on the benefits to allow the project proceed. So I want them to do activities which are in conformity with maintaining the main resource we want to maintain here, which is water, as well as we are also able to generate the benefits, which is the rice. Showers of Lake Victoria along low-lying railway wetlands hold large deposits of fine lake sand which is on high demand in the construction industry. Recently, there has been an influx of unregulated sand miners within the wetlands who have increased the levels of sand extraction by introducing mechanized mining systems. Uh, beginning with 2015, that's when we started having the major encroachers coming to start undertaking different activities of rail, in rail, especially sand mining. That's when sand mining took over. So the rate has skyrocketed in the past five years. The exponential rate at which the unregulated sand mining was happening in Rela wetland caused serious degradation to the wetland system, which attracted the attention of the regulating authority, NEMA. We had a, an avalanche of investment in our country, remember? What the ex expressway, we had the, 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 the two dams, the Simba Dam and the Karuma Dam. Those dams alone needed the quality of sand, which is very high. And there were two options. You got to import the sand from outside for that, or use the natural resources that were there. So Lukaya, sections of Lukaya wetland had the deposits of that type of sand. And so initially, people went and mined it without license and went and put order there. Instilling order necessitated devising stringent measures by issuing mining permits that are tied to restoration conditions. Initially, when we started, we, we didn't, the, the guidance was general, but in the middle, we, we, not, we notified that we should improve on the, the licensing regime. So we developed guidelines detailing the procedure how you can mine. So now you, you mine good, but you mine in the, using a where you have delineated you. That is where you're going to mine this year. Then after you mine, you first restore before you go to the next. Positively, efforts have been made by some miners to restore patches of wetlands where sand had been mined. 
This is one example where wetland vegetation is progressively reestablishing after mining activities have been discontinued. However, the Value for Money audit report found out that some sand miners extracted sand at much deeper levels than what was allowed by the permit. Furthermore, cases were reported where developers who had been issued permits abandoned the sites without restoring them. This violates permits conditions and costs government restoration fees. River Rizi, a small river, yet crucial to the wetland system, spanning agricultural farmlands across the several districts of western Uganda. It is an indicator of the extent of the loss of two-thirds of wetland systems in the region due to encroachment for human development activities. The Rizi system covers 13 districts stretching from Obuhweju district, uh, Bushenyi district, Shema, downstream to Liantonde and Chotela. The major threat in the Wiz is mainly, is mainly on uh, encroachment for animal, for animal farm establishment, encroachment for, CA for agricultural purposes, and small to some extent of also urbanization. A narrow view of water purification plant for the recently gazetted in Barara City. For decades, the facility has served the urban center with water drawn from River Riz main stream, a lifeline for the population of close to 200,000 residents of the city. Unfortunately, over the years, the river has been progressively losing its water volume to the verge of drying up. This is the gauging station for monitoring the river flow. The first pillar, that is where the gauging was in the 70s and 60s. But because of the lowering and decline of the flow of the river, to get the information, we have been shifting over a period of time to track the flow of the river. We have shift, shifted almost like uh, three meters from the original gauging point in the 70s and 60s to currently where we couldn't even manage to get the flow. So when they talk of the dying river, this is one of the symptoms and that is, that is where the evidence of saying river is, is drying up. This state of affairs has unfolded over the years from selfish and sustainable farming activities and utilization of the water resource on the upstream section of the river and its smaller tributaries. National Environment Authority NEMA states that they have put in place restoration measures to bring back the river to life. We have had a lot of unblocking, taking people to court and uh, again doing public education which must be, which people must come in. When we come downstream to Lake Kachera, downstream on this side, we've actually uh, removed the people who are farming up to, the, up to the lake. In Mukono, the quest for agricultural farmland in the peri urban densely populated area is taking up expanses of formerly designated wetland at quite an alarming rate. There have been attempts to restore and demarcate the wetlands. The wetland, as you can see, uh, is uh, experiencing uh, threats of encroachment, uh, mainly cultivation. Here at Ruajari, a wetland stretching up to 53 kilometers, the Ministry of Water and Environment is installing beacons. It is hoped that demarcation will deter any further destruction of the wetland system by clearly marking which part of the wetland is off limits for agricultural activities. One of the ways of trying to stop it is demarcating it on ground using uh, uh, concrete pillars. So before the audit uh, uh, happened, there had been an attempt of the restoration process and part of that restoration process culminated into the demarcation. Uh, of, the, of this uh, part of this wetland called Rwajari, which uh, is uh, increasingly experiencing some threat, increasing threat of uh, degradation and encroachment. However, the costly demarcation exercise alone is not effective if the population is unconvinced of government's motives and benefits accruing from the wetland. 
Mukono District is exploring alternatives of managing the wetland without resorting to forceful evictions. We are trying to involve other sectors to come on board and work with us and offer solutions. These people who don't have uh, live roads elsewhere, we give them live roads. These ones who are doing unsustainable agriculture, production comes in and also help that. Otherwise, trying to really ch say you chase them out, it becomes even a humanitarian issue. Because some people will even say you are chasing them to go and die when you don't even have, give them alternatives. In Michiana, Nakatongole wetland, a major system that drains into Lake Wamala, is not only an important regulator of the ecosystem of the Greater Michiana, but also a critical water supply source to the population of Michiana town. It exudes the impression of an intact ecological system that is well protected following years of mismanagement. We did some enforcement where we, uh, we, we engaged the police to evict people who had uh, started cultivating in the wetland and also arrested some. Uh, we, we were forced to even clear the, the gardens and the, the trees of the Caliplas who had been planted there because they were using chemicals to kill the weeds and uh, the chemicals ended up in, in the water which is supplied by national water. So water was polluted. So after that, we restored it, and as you can see now, five years, four years, it is almost fully restored. Challenging though it may have been, the results of a successful efforts of restoration and demarcation are visible through a healthy ecosystem which provides both ecological, social, and water resource benefits. In this particular wetland, Nakatogori wetland, we, we installed around 20 pillars. Uh, which are to, uh, one high, about 100 meters apart. So it covers almost uh, two kilometers in, 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 in Nakatongo wetlands. So we planted them at the boundaries, at, at the boundary of the wetland to show people where they are supposed to, to stop. This is Chewando Swamp in Chivale district part of the larger river calf wetland system in the central region. Currently, wetlands in the district cover at least 15% of the total land area, which is a recovery of about 2% since 2018. Although the district's restoration efforts have been frustrated by lack of sufficient funds, they have devised innovative ways to demarcate and restore the wetlands. We used local trees local trees because they, we, we assume that when we come back we will find that tree when it is already there. Uh, in some situations like in gardens when we don't have uh, tree seedlings we are putting stalks but those ones are temporary and we are also using the ex already existing trees which were there and putting markers on those trees to inform those people that this is the boundary of the wetland or where you are supposed to to stop. Chotasia Bay wetland, part of the wetlands in the Nomuremu Rushebe Akasambia system in Kisoro district. This particular portion bordering Lake Mutanda covers 1.48 square kilometers of water catchment which provides various types of ecological benefits to the environment and surrounding communities. It has regrown its original vegetation following concerted restoration efforts between District Environment Office, the Ministry of Water and Environment, and the National Environment Authority. 62 beacons were used to demarcate the wetland boundaries, but people did not vacate until there was massive public education which convinced the population to stop cultivating crops to allow the wetland to regenerate. 90% of the wetland has been recovered after these pillars had been put there, still the communities were reluctant to leave. Until finally in 2019, Nema came and said, you people, you, saw, well, you can see where the boundary of the wetland is. Why can't you leave? We are giving you a period of one month just to remove your crops. And voluntarily, the communities removed their crops. And now that is why you can see this wetland like this. However, restoration through demarcation efforts on another portion of the wetland system in Sereli, Kanawa sub-county, has faced many challenges. Beacons that were installed to show the boundaries have been uprooted and removed. We had covered this whole stretch, all these hard pillars along the road. 
and about the pillars, how they are, why they are normal. Uh, we had some bit of conflict with the communities. Most of them complaining that uh, their land had been taken and they had no other source of livelihood. Around Christmas time in 2016, uh, the communities decided to remove the bacon, shifted them and took them to a small wetland just ahead there. So after the bacon, nothing else, government stopped at that, no engagement, leaving us with our small budget to keep handling it and we couldn't do much. This is an arm of Lumbuye wetland in Kaliro district, an expansive network of marshes that drain into Lake Choga. This part of the system is facing decimation because of agricultural activities, mainly sugarcane growing. The initiative to demarcate the wetland boundaries through erecting beacons is facing stiff resistance from the local population. A number of beacons that were meant to clearly indicate which part of the wetland to be protected have been vandalized. The Auditor General's report also noted that similar challenges have impeded demarcation efforts in other wetlands with about two-thirds of the purchased pillars and beacons lying unused, risking wastage of more than 600 million that was spent on their purchase. Nyangahia wetland on the arm of Lake Choga Basin, a system stretching over 58 kilometers. This is a section where Masindi town is located. Inevitably, the wetland is bearing the brunt of urbanization combined with commercial forestry encroachment. As the town expands, demand for land for construction is putting pressure on the wetland. On the outskirts of the town are many tree nurseries owners of which have taken advantage of the seemingly redundant land and the fact that it is within close proximity to water for irrigating their trees. However, in some cases, the authorities have approved the nursery beds enterprises as a good sustainable practice. The wetland management authorities are responding to the threats with the demarcation efforts, but according to the district environment office, the efforts are critically being hampered by the shortage of funds. They have not been getting enough money. Uh, I think uh, all the districts are getting about 700 million. Magongolo Swamp in Busaba Sab County, Butaleja District, a wetland that connects to Mpologoma wetland system. We have a, uh, uh, an area of 664 square kilometers as our entire district. But you find that 40% of this, 40% of this, which is like 259, is covered by wetland. Rice growing, the mainstay of the people in the area, is the major threat to the wetland and according to the district authorities, 50% of this wetland has been degraded. The wetland surrounding us was covered by papyrus five years ago. But right now, people are using it for rice cultivation, which is not sustainable enough. They introduced the, the channels, and these do not control water in any way. Restoration efforts have been limited to only public education, and not much action has been taken to remove the encroachers from the wetland. As a district, we have not done any demarcation because we, our budget cannot support us. I can end at sensitization of a particular group and then the others. And before I realize, of course, a lot of encroachment has been done in most, in most of the areas. So we really need governments, we, a, gov, a government's hand. River Nachiloro in Moroto, one of the many streams in Karamoja region that originate from Mount Moroto. For a relatively dry area, this is classified as a wetland. The definition of a wetland is uh, supposed to be like permanent you know, a surface area, a surface area with permanent water. But for our case, we have seasonal rivers and we call them wetlands. This one co continues uh, and joins the rest of the rivers which join up to Aswa. The actual wetland system supplies a network of seasonal and permanent rivers which are a lifeline for people in the semi-arid Karamoja region. On a positive note, this relatively dry area has shown exemplary conservation efforts, which have led to recovery of the wetland system. The value for money audit findings indicate that 
Between 1994 and 2015, the wetland drainage basin in Kidepo increased by 8%. At least we are a bit fairer than other places. The legal route is one of the options the Ministry of Water and Environment is pursuing to stem wetland loss. A move that has registered some success. We have cancelled a number of titles, but quite a number of them. The bulk of them are still not cancelled because the matter is pending in court. So the law at the moment, that is how it operates. But we are in the process of uh, doing a new law, which is going to make it more difficult for encroachers uh, to walk away and use the existing legal framework to really uh, promote their illegal stay uh, in wetlands. The evidence of wetland loss and degradation across the country is overwhelming, particularly around Lake Victoria Basin and Choga drainage systems. Government's efforts to reverse this decline during the four year under review had registered little success. This, this is attributed, attributed to unclear roles, responsibilities, and mandates between. Wetland Management Department, NEMA, NEMA and, and other key players, players in duration and management of wetlands and limited funding to district local, local government to restore, restore protect, protect and manage, and manage wetlands. wetlands. The Auditor General's Value for Money Audit noted that the current strategies which endeavor to do restoration after encroachment has already happened are not very effective. In total, 2,516 hectares of wetland were restored during the period between 2014 and 2018. This represents only 0.3% of the nearly 750,000 hectares that should have been restored by 2020 if the target of increasing coverage to 12% is to be realized. This Herculean target would also cost government at least 1.1 trillion shillings and the gains would still risk being undone by reencroachment. As things stand, degradation continues to outspace restoration efforts by a long stretch. On average, every year, the government restores about 630 hectares of wetland but loses about 28,000 to degradation. Consequently, Wetland coverage instead continues to fall further below the 12% target. This state of affairs calls for a change in the ministry's strategy. The audit report advises that a cheaper, more sustainable approach would be to put more emphasis on addressing the issues that push people into wetlands in the first place, rather than coming in to restore and evict people after reencroachment has occurred. Where wetlands must be used, strict enforcement is critical to ensure that the conditions of the wetland permits are adhered to.